so so when we talk about multiple regression multiple regression is basically the same as linear regression uh, the only difference is that in linear regression we are only dealing with a simple model wherein we have one independent variable and then we have one dependent variable and there is a hypothesis suggesting that the independent variable has an impact on the dependent variable and specifically linear regression although not exclusively uh, is used when that is our objective we want to predict the outcome variable using a predictor variable and specifically when these variables are measured as continuous variables but as what we have pointed out previously it may as well be the case that the independent variable is a dichotomous variable. In fact, whether in some three-level categorical variable, although the analysis is a bit more complicated because you have to create um, dummy variables. So what I'm saying is that it's possible, but the process is more lengthy and more complex. For the meantime, we'll be using regression, um, multiple regression as well, under such situations. And so you have a continuous IV, continuous DV. Sometimes maybe we can also encounter uh, dichotomous independent variables. But if it's a dichotomous independent variable and you only have a simple model like this, you know, one IV, one DV, then I guess um, the, the better option would be to run t-test paired samples or independent samples depending on the nature of the data set instead of running linear regression. But as what I have said, it's also possible. Now, multiple regression is exactly linear regression. Uh, the only difference is that in multiple regression, because we have the term multiple here, the term multiple here refers to the number of predictors. So if you have more than one predictor, and this is the nature of reality, certain events are not only influenced by one thing. Events are influenced by a variety of things. One particular option that we can do is we can run three separate linear regressions. So we can do a linear regression regressing the dependent variable to the predictor variable. But before we continue, why is it called regression in the first place? So to regress means to move back, right? But you can see that the arrows here are not moving back, they're moving forward. It's called regression because essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to explain the variance in this by understanding or by examining this. So to explain this using this, so that is the reason why we, it's called a regression. So like what I said, one thing that we can do is we can run three separate linear regressions. However, if, if you feel that that is really not a good idea because your intention is to test the entire model as a whole, you want to simultaneously and separately examine the influence of these three predictor variables and uh, examine their impact on your outcome variable, then that is the value of multiple regression. But analysis-wise, and even when we run a software, we don't have a separate interface or a separate module for multiple regression. So if you want to run linear regression or multiple regression or maybe even hierarchical regression, we'll still be using the linear regression function in our software. So it's practically the same analysis. Like what I said, the only difference is that we have multiple predictors that we want to test instead of individually examining these three relationships. In linear regression, we learned that linear regression allows us to create a linear equation. And that linear equation is something like uh, the predicted value of y is equals to a plus bx. And in multiple regression, essentially, it does the same thing. It also allows us, although we don't use this particular equation as what we have discussed previously, it also allows us to create a multiple regression equation or a linear equation for multiple predictors. 
and although the notations are slightly different, it's exactly the same. So that is our predicted value of y. So this is our coefficient when um, x is 0. This is our coefficient. So this refers to the slope or the, the unstandardized coefficient. Uh, and this refers to the first variable. But this applies only if indeed we have only one predictor variable. But because in multiple regression, we have more than one predictor variable, let's say, for example, we have another one here, that is the reason why in this equation, we have, we have another set of functions here. So this refers to the coefficient of the second variable, if this were to be our second variable, and this is the value of our x variable, of our second predictor variable. And then if you have another one, so, so the ellipsis here means to say that add on as many as you want. No. So one of these for every additional variable. If you have four predictors, then you have three additional of these coefficient no, and the value of x no, in the equation. And I think I failed to mention this to you uh, previously in a regression coefficient given that the relationships that we, de that we deal with are oftentimes not perfect, another thing to be accounted for in the equation is the error. Uh, and so normally, there is always sort of an error component. Although itong error component na to, it's just a symbol to say that the prediction using this particular equation will never be a perfect prediction. So this function is added to the equation only to symbolize or only to inform the ones who are reading the equation that every time you predict y using this particular equation, the prediction will never be perfect because there is an error component. And sometimes we don't even put it. That is exactly what you're seeing here as well. So you also have that symbol, which tells us that every time we predict the y variable using this particular equation, it will not be perfect because there will always be, there will always be error in the prediction. So you can think of multiple regression equations as sort of extended versions of linear regression equations. But as what I have said in our discipline, we don't really care much about the equations because we don't use these equations because it doesn't make sense to necessarily predict the value of a particular outcome variable by computing, by plugging in values to our predictor variables and then computing the predicted value because we don't talk about our variables in such a manner. Uh, so here is an example of an entire model so based on the theory of planned behavior. In our language, we call the, these as models. So models, they, they depict how reality works. It's a diagram of how certain psychological phenomena work, or any phenomena for that matter. I just called it a psychological phenomena because our discipline is psychology. So this is a model. And what is this trying to paint a picture of? It's trying to paint a picture of practically any behavior, any behavior intention. So this particular theory um, is a very general theory. It's a generic theory um, because there are a number of behaviors for which we can form intentions about. So in essence, the theory of planned behavior is a general theory that intends to explain practically every behavior. Will you attend Zoom class? Yes, you will attend Zoom class if you have the intention to attend Zoom class or an online class. When will you intend to attend a Zoom class? When you have a positive attitude towards online class? when the subjective norm imposes that you attend an online class. If you don't, there are sanctions. If you don't, your parents will get mad at you. If you don't, you might fail a subject. If you don't, your peers will look down upon you. And if you have perceived behavioral control, if you think that you can attend an online class, you have the necessary technological um, resources, you have the capability of operating uh, the necessary tools for an online class such as a 
laptop or a software. But when you know that you are capable of sitting down and looking at the screen and listening to your professor for one and a half hours, so if you have that, then that would inform your behavioral intention. Another thing that you have to learn about multiple regression is that there are several methods of entering the data set. And these are the following. Forced entry, hierarchical, and um, stepwise regression. So I'm going to draw a model here. So this model is a model having multiple predictors. So let's say, for example, we have four predictors. Uh, and all of these four predictors, we hypothesize to influence a certain outcome variable. In, in forced entry, we simultaneously, we enter all of these four as predictors of the outcome variable. Sometimes, however, when you enter these particular variables in the analysis, you want a certain order to it. And that's why you can create certain hierarchies. So for example, ang sabi mo, Ayoko silang i-enter sabay-sabay. I want to split the predictors into levels or hierarchies. At ito yung split na gusto ko. So gusto ko, ito yung tinatawag ko na step one. So this is my first hierarchy. And then, uh, I call this as step two. So now we have two hierarchies. In fact, pwede mo siyang gawing tatlo. So sabi ko, gusto kong maglagay pa ng third step, step three. So in hierarchical regression, you decide that, all right, I'm gonna analyze first the influence of this dito. Essentially, step one is simply, uh, this is step one. So right now in step one, let's say for example, we found out that this first variable does have an influence or can explain this variable. And then you want to know what happens if I add the second variable. Will it add additional variance to the outcome variable? So this becomes your step two. So in step two, you have the first variable and then you have the second variable. Uh, and then you can sort of write about that. And then finally, you can add two more variables. So the whole thing now becomes your step three in the, in the hierarchy of regressions. And why should we do that? No, I will explain that later on. So I'm just introducing you the, var the variety of um, multiple regression. And then the last one is stepwise linear regression. So stepwise is similar to hierarchical regression. The only difference is that in hierarchical regression, the order of which is the first hierarchy, the second in the hierarchy, the third variable, lies on the researcher. So the researcher decides um, the order of the variables. But in stepwise, you leave the decision to the computer. So the computer, um, using a certain uh, algorithm, is as much as possible, we try to avoid stepwise regression in, in psychology uh, because we do not want the computer to make decisions for us in terms of the sequence of how the variables will be entered in the model because the sequence of the variable relies on certain research conceptualization. It's theory dependent. And of course, the computer does not know the theory. And that's why in our discipline, we are taught not to make use of stepwise regression. So what is valuable to us you know, in our discipline would be forced entry, which is what we normally use. And then under special circumstances, we can also use hierarchical multiple regression.